right now this is just a quick extra video and it's about this wow and flutter meter after using this in a video a while ago quite a few people asked me if I could explain it in more detail because I hadn't seen one of these before uh, so that's what I'm going to do now now I'm no great expert in these things I just know how to use this to a limited degree so what I'll be doing I'll be explaining the basics of this subject but of course there's a lot more you can read up on or research later about wow and flutter so yeah this is really just beginner's guide level stuff now, Wow and Flutter, let's start off with what is it? Well, it's the variations in the speed of playback of something. So, say, for example, a tape. If you're playing a tape and it just sounds like it's, it's dragging in the machine, it uh, doesn't sound quite right. I'll give you a demonstration. In fact, I've got a bit of music in here. If we just play this and then I'll adjust the speed on the back, and that gives you an idea as to an extreme case of what Wow and Flutter would sound like. So you get the idea. Doesn't sound particularly nice. Now, what's the difference between wow and flutter? They usually just lump together, wow and flutter. This is a wow and flutter meter. Uh, but what I'll uh, do, I've got a record here somewhere. There we go. This is from Decker. It's called How to Give Yourself a Stereo Checkout. There's all sorts of tests on this record, quite useful really, uh, for making sure your equipment's working properly. However, there is a little bit of a wow and flutter test on here, and in this it explains wow and flutter. So let's just have a listen. Wow is a term used to describe slow variations in the pitch of sounds when you play records. Uh, this is usually caused by the turntable rotating unevenly. Flutter is the term for rapid variations in pitch, and usually this is caused by uneven rotation of the mechanism driving the turntable itself. So the words used to describe the problem are really quite descriptive. Wow gives you a similar kind of sound when you say it to the effect that you get, and flutter, well, kind of like a fluttering of uh, bird's wings, very quick variations in the speed. Now, the machine I've got here, the Philips PM6307, when I bought this, it was virtually new, I think. Well, new old stock. It certainly didn't look like it had seen a hard life. Anyway, I've got the manual with it as well, which doesn't look particularly well thumbed. And it's from 1987, the manual. This could be even later than that if they carried on making it for a few years. And it's a very neat little device. Most wow and flutter meters are quite large uh, things that look more like big pieces of lab equipment. This is quite a, a, a nice looking device which is the reason I've got this particular one. But it has the features on it that I need. I'll explain those. So at the, on the left here, we've got drift. That's basically your speed overall. Is your device running fast or slow? It'll measure that and show it on here. And you can adjust the scale below there. You can have a maximum of 3% on the right or 1% or 0.3% as a maximum. So you can adjust the scale of these as you want to narrow down on a device that's running almost perfect, but just slightly out, you can uh, narrow down your scale so you can look at it in a bit more detail. Flutter on the right, that's really the main one that we're looking at though. And that's gonna give us a reading again, which we can vary with the scale on the bottom here. And uh, once we get it going, I'll show you how that works. Now, the way this thing works is that it doesn't listen to music. We could hear that music earlier on that it wasn't sounding right at all, but this device, doesn't know that it needs to listen to a particular tone and then figure out how far out from that tone is the sound that's coming into it now you'll notice at the top here i've got three kilohertz or 3.15 kilohertz variable there and of course i've got a couple of other little controls that aren't that important but yeah you get a test tone at three kilohertz or 3.15 kilohertz i don't know why there are two they just are and it's got a button to select between them now that test tone sounds like this now that is off a digital file so that test tone is going to be perfect it's three kilohertz it can't vary in speed there's no mechanical things to uh, go wrong there so if i put that into this device here it's going to measure it as a perfect three kilohertz tone so let's just get it on the screen there now let everything settle down a little bit. I'll zero it out. Right, so that's the three kilohertz signal going into it now. And you'll see it looks like there's nothing happening at all. 
the needles on this one is stating zero in the middle, so there's no uh, speed variation, and the wear and flutter again is showing a zero on the right hand side. So you could be forgiven for thinking that this particular device isn't working properly. Well, it is. Let me do something else. We'll play the test tone out of this. I've got a test cassette in here. So if I put the line into this machine now and press play, we'll let the needle settle down a little bit here. So it's listed to that three kilohertz tone again. And you'll notice the one on the left, the drift is way off. And that's because I'd left that speed adjustment on that I was messing with before. So we'll switch that off. So now it's going to go back to the correct speed. And you'll see the one on the left, the drift, speed's virtually perfect on this particular device here. Uh, the flutter doesn't look to be moving much either. So let's adjust the scale down from 1% as a maximum to 0.3 on both of them. And now we can see that we are getting some slight flutter on the right hand needle here. We're getting up to, well, if the 0.3 is at the top there, we'll read the three at the bottom. So that's 0 0.2, 0 0.1, that's 0.05. So we're looking at about 0.06, 0 0.07. In fact, let's put it down to 0.1 as a maximum. And now we can see if we're using the 0.1 at the top, that's 0.8 there. So we're looking at sort of 0.08, if I've got my percentages right. It's quite difficult sometimes when you adjust the scale down that you have to remember to put the extra zero in. But yeah, we're looking at a, a, a flutter measurement of 0.08 to sort of 0.09-ish. However, this one here, the drift, the speed, is virtually perfect. I, I can't get the scale any closer than that. Now, this is all dependent on you having a good test tape. This tape that I've got in here, these aren't cheap. If you get a proper test tape, which has got a three kilohertz signal on, I think this cost me something like 50 pounds or so, perhaps a little bit more. The reason for that is because it has to be as near to perfect as possible. For example, if I got that three kilohertz tone off this digital player and recorded it onto this Walkman and then played it back, then that would be measuring my Walkman, fine. What if though I got a Walkman that didn't have a recording function on it. So I then put a tape into it. Just try to remember where the tape was. If I put a tape into it and then connect this up, now this is going to give the reading for this particular device, but based on the tape that's in it, that's been recorded on something else. So it's going off the scale for the moment. So let's just put the numbers up to the top there. Right, we are looking on this one, I'll put it up to 1%. So we're looking at a flutter of somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. So if I put it up to 0.3, well, it's, hit, it's hitting the top there. So we're just about 0.3% wear and flutter. Remember the other one was 0, 0.0 something. So that is quite a bit worse. But again, dependent upon that tape. Where does that tape come from? It's got to be somewhere that they're producing tapes that are almost perfect. So that is why you pay a lot of money for them, because the people that make these tapes are making them to a very high standard on very well calibrated equipment. It's no good starting off with a rubbish tape to start with, because if this tape has goodness knows what level of wow and flutter on it, whatever I'm doing there, every machine I'm testing after that, I'm really just testing that first machine that recorded it and then adding those results to the device I'm playing it back on. So I'm stacking up problems, which is why you need the very best test tape that you can get. Now this in here is a test record a wear and flutter test record. So I can measure the performance of my record player. I can measure the speed whether it's running fast or slow, uh, that RPM app you might have seen me use, I can't use that in this device because I can't put my phone on it, it won't go through the middle bit. And also my strobe disc I've got is too thick to go in here. It's quite a thick disc to uh, make sure it doesn't sort of move about or something. I'm not quite sure why they make it thick, but anyway, whatever reason, it is thick and it doesn't go in here, it doesn't grab it properly. So there's no real way I can do an easy test on this. But with this, I can with a test record. Now here's the thing, the test record I got this rank flutter meter test record. This actually states on the back that you're guaranteed to get a certain level of wow and flutter with the record. It, I'll just show you a close up of it here, but it says at 33 and a third, the recorded level of wow 
is 0.025 and the flutter is 0.016. So whatever you do, you're going to be getting that to start with. You're not going to start off at zero. So that just demonstrates that it's very hard to get a perfectly recorded thing on an analog format that doesn't have any kind of speed variation in it. Anyway, I've got the record in here now. Uh, let's uh, start it off. And what I'll do, I'll plug my test meter into my record player. Put both things to 1% at the top. I'll zero it out. And let's just see where we're up to. Okay, right. Well, that doesn't look too bad, actually. The speed isn't bad. Let's just get that scale down to 0.3 there. Okay, so if we're looking at 0.3 at the top and 0.3 at the bottom, uh, we're running about 0.1% slow. So that's not bad. And if we're looking at the uh, flutter measurement here, well, it's, I'll have to put it as 0.3 again at the top. So that's looking at a flutter somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2. It just keeps going back and forth. And you can see it's quite a regular movement. And of course, that's kind of your record with a bit of warp in it, perhaps. But yeah, it, it seems to be performing pretty well, this record player for a little battery one. It is uh, a quartz lock mechanism, which might indicate, which, which might be the reason that uh, the drift is so good. It just keeps going off and then coming back. Maybe the quartz lock mechanism is going, hold on, uh, and then trying to adjust itself and the record just keeps wanting to drop it slower again. But regardless, that's, that's a very good result really for a record player. These are the kind of things you wouldn't be able to hear if you were listening to them. Right, so I think I've demonstrated uh, how this particular device works as far as measuring the wow and flutter. Of course, the ideal thing is that you don't want any wow and flutter at all, although with uh, any kind of mechanical analog format, you're going to get a little bit of it, uh, which is one of the benefits, of course, of digital. But if you get it low enough on a device like this, then that's about as good as you're going to get, and you probably wouldn't be able to hear it. Certainly wouldn't be able to hear it from this uh, Walkman WMD6C. I doubt very much, even though this is quite a bit higher, this Walkman, I'd be able to hear it from that. You've, for me, it's really got to get quite uh, noticeable to be able to hear it. Now, there's a few things that could cause it, of course, if you're wondering about that. I mean, we could have uh, stretch belts, um, your capstan and things. Could You could have a sticky pinch roller, maybe. Your tape could be dragging, actually, in the tape cap, uh, cassette. So your cassette can cause a wow and flutter. Your record could be warped. The motor, the bearings could be shot. There's all sorts of things could cause it. This is just telling you that you've got some. And then from using this, you go, right, well, let's try and narrow it down, figure out bit by bit what it is that's causing the problem. But once you get it down to a certain level, it doesn't really, it's not worth kind of trying to get it to zero because you're never going to get there. It's a case of ever diminishing returns at that point. But what I'll do, I'll put the uh, computer software on there, which is a Windows app called WFGUI. And I learned about this through the tapeheads.net forums. And I'll put a link to this in the video description text box. And I'll also provide you with that three kilohertz signal that you'll need to feed into it or from whatever tape device you're, you're playing it back from so you can measure it on your computer. But I'll just get all that set up now. So just give me a moment. Right, I've got the PC set up here now. So this is just a Windows only application. And I'll just start it off running. And again, with this one, you have to select whether you're listening to a 3 kilohertz or 3.15 kilohertz signal. And now if I press play on the tape here, we'll see what result comes up. So it needs to settle down a bit, just like the other one did. But I hope you can see here, I've got a camera zoomed in on this a little bit. Sorry, no screen capture for this one today. But uh, so we've got the peak there, 0.07-ish which is pretty much the same result as my old Philips device. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, now at the top here, you can see the frequency 2999.0, which shows that it's running just a tiny fraction slow. That's indistinguishable, really. But that's how you measure the speed on this one. There's no percentage that shows. You just have to do a bit of mathematics yourself. But at that level, I wouldn't even bother. You could adjust the scale on this one as well. So if I just put it to 0.1% at the top, again, we can see the needle stays below there. Of course, the result remains the same. It's just you're zooming in on it a little bit more. 
But this is the way that most people would measure wear and flutter, I'd imagine, nowadays, rather than using a piece of equipment like that, because, of course, with something like that, you're adding in an extra step, which could also be faulty. So you can start off with your faulty tape that hasn't got good wear and flutter on it to start with as your measurement, and then you've got your faulty machine to test it with. So at least this is taking one of those things out of the, uh, out of the steps. But what I'd say is I prefer using the one with the needles on in videos and things. It's just easier to demonstrate. Plug it in, you can see it happening straight away. I don't have to mess around setting all this up. But yeah, if I was doing it all day long, I'd be using something like this. Now, I'll just plug this back into these speakers again, because there's one thing I meant to do earlier on that I didn't get around to doing. If I can find out where this wire ends up. Um, oh, here it is. Right. So if I plug this into here, Again, that's that sound. So, of course, the way it measures it, high the pitch means it's running too fast, low, too low, and variation, that's your flutter. Should have mentioned that earlier on. But that's it. So, if you want to um, download this software, well, links in the video description along with a three kilohertz signal for you to test your own equipment with. Uh, but that's it for the moment for this, uh, I say quick video, quickly put together video. It wasn't entirely uh, short in length. But uh, the reason I'm doing this today is you'll be seeing this, uh, well, it's not here now, <laughs> the Wow and Flutter test machine in a future video in perhaps a day or two. Uh, so if anyone wants to know what that machine is and how it works, well, I'll just direct them back to this video. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.